Hi, honeys. It's Michelle. Happy 2021. <laughs> it's uh, starting a little odd, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it's funny. On New Year's Eve, my husband said, what did he say? Happy level 13 of Jumanji. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, do you think it's going to get better or do you think it's just going to get crazier? And I'm like, oh, come on. It's got to get better. He's like, I'm not seeing it, babe. <laughs> yeah, he was right. I was wrong. And I just thought I'd publicly acknowledge that. <laughs> so my last video about 2020 is a tag video and it's by the original tag was by the perpetual page turner and she's got a blog and I don't think she has a YouTube page, but I will put a link down to her blog in the comments in case you want to take a look. This is a 2020 reading survey tag. So I'm really happy to do this because I'm happy 2020 is over. And even if 2021 is Jumanji level 13, that's okay because at least we're ready for it now. So the first question is, sorry, I've got a list here that I wrote down. The first question is best book you read in 2020. Okay. I had to really think about this for a long time. What was the book that had just everything? Characters that stuck with me, a storyline that moved me, a, a book that made me laugh, made me cry really affected me and the one that came up in my mind let me move my little guy here let me move him up here yeah okay was winter counts by david heska Juan Blee wyden oh this book was immaculate <laughs> this was a beautiful blend of character time place storyline and I, I really loved the plot. Um, the main character, his name was Virgil Wounded Horse. I absolutely loved him. He was very human with a lot of flaws. And I love that because I'm not perfect. I don't find perfect characters very appealing to you. I mean, and I felt I love reading books that are stepping outside of my world. Um, and I'm not very familiar with Native American culture, so I was really, really excited and happy that not only did I read it, but I loved it. I was invested in it, and I can't wait to read it again. Best book of the year, in my opinion. Book you were excited about and that you were going to love but didn't? For me, it was In Cold Blood by Truman Capote. I heard so many good things from so many people about this book, and I just, I hated it. I did. And that's okay. We don't all have the same reactions to the same books. And that's what makes us unique is our different reactions and our different feelings. And so I still love that, and I uh, appreciate and respect that other people enjoyed it, but it just wasn't my cup of tea most surprising in a good way book that you read in 2020 okay that's going to be the space between worlds by micaiah johnson i don't know that i've really read science fiction before and if i have it was a long time ago and it was probably forced on me in high school or college i'm just not a sci-fi person but it turns out i am a sci-fi person I started really falling in love with, you know, if I give it a chance, I discovered that I love sci-fi movies and I thought, why not read some sci-fi books? And this book I absolutely loved and cherished. And it's another one that I plan on rereading eventually. The Space Between Worlds, just in case you don't know about it, is about a woman who travels to other dimensions to visit her, but in other dimensions very fascinating to find out what would happen if you turned right instead of left that one time or if you didn't break up with that person or if you 
whatever it's really fascinating <laughs> to see all these different dimensions and it's the same her same name same face i think it's the same name but it's the same her but different everywhere favorite new author you discovered in 2020 joe hill Boy, did I love this book, Nosferatu. And one of you recommended that I read, what was it? Is it called Heart-Shaped Box, I think? Hold on one second here. Yeah, Heart-Shaped Box. It is on my TBR. I will be getting a copy as soon as I can, and I will read it this year. But yeah, he's definitely an author that I, especially since he already has other books, I'm very excited about reading more of his books. Best book from a genre you don't typically read and was out of your comfort zone. Once again, it was the Space Between Worlds book. That was out of my comfort zone. I'm not typically a sci-fi reader, but I read it and loved it. Most action-packed, thrilling, unputdownable book of the year. Okay, for me, that was... This one, <laughs> Leave the World Behind, which is funny because if you look at the um, reviews, some people found it to be the most boring book they've ever read and gave up before they hit page 50. I found it riveting, exciting, thought compelling. I couldn't put it down. I think I read it in about 24 hours. I love this book. But once again, we are all different people who have different feelings and emotions about things, right? Book you read in 2020 that you would be most likely to reread in 2021. Winter counts. <laughs> I didn't want to put this back on the bookshelf because I'm probably going to be answering a lot of questions with that book. It was epic. You have to read it if you haven't read it. Okay, favorite cover of a book. A lot of them are my book of the month selection, so that's nice. This one, I thought it was so beautiful. The Star-Crossed Sisters of Tuscany. A close runner-up, though, is The Space Between Worlds. I thought this was so pretty. And I thought it was kind of neat how you could... <laughs> you know, it was like, this is her in one world, and that's her in another. And then the back of it, too. Just so gorgeous. How the worlds were even different. Most memorable character... Virgil. <laughs> I loved him. Most beautifully written book. Okay. My most beautifully written book was actually The Shadows by Alex North. I really like his writing. He has this way of making me feel like I'm there. And not that the other books don't, but this one, I don't know. It's like you could literally smell the paste in the room in the elementary school you know, like, do you ever feel like that about books where it's like, you're just right there? That's how this book felt for me. Most thought-provoking, life-changing book. Okay, for me, that was Nosferatu. I have thought about this book a lot. Um, this is a book where I laughed and I cried and I felt anguish and I, I just felt a lot of emotions. And I learned a lot from the book and I think about this book every day. Which is pretty crazy, but I really did. It was really a just shocking, disgusting, beautiful book about how most bad guys don't think they're bad. They think they're doing the right thing. And it makes it easier, if you've been through abuse in the past, to forgive your abuser. I'm not saying you want to call them and see how they're doing and go out for coffee or anything, but... It's easy. It just makes it easier to come to terms with what you may or may not have gone through, even if you weren't abused, just people who've mistreated you, to realize that they might have somewhere they were coming from and to just let it go. You know, it was so good. Book you can't believe you waited until 2020 to read. Okay, for me, that would be, if I can reach it, that would be The Marriage Pact by Michelle Richmond. This book was so good. 
I really, really loved it. And I've read two or three of her books and loved them too. So why did I wait? Like, what am I doing? Any book I haven't read of Michelle Richmond's, I need to go out and buy. That's where we're at, obviously. <laughs> Favorite passage or quote from a book? Well, you know what book I'm going to grab, right? <laughs> Winter Counts. Uh, my favorite passage, let me look at my little book journal here. It was page 71. And then it was dark, a black hole sky. But I looked down and saw that the stars, every one of them, were now in my hands. Lighting up my veins, my muscles, my bones. I stood there alone with my ancestors and listened to them. Finally, I turned away. As I walked back to my life, the words my mother used to say finally came to me. I hope I don't slaughter this. Wakan Tonka Nichi Un. May the Creator guide you. Isn't that beautiful? Uh, to me, that had multiple different meanings. <laughs> Kind of went deep with it, you know, thinking about ancestors and what we get from them. And I love that, that passage. The longest book you read in the longest book I read in 2020. Um, oops, let me move this book here. Okay. The longest and shortest book I read in 2020. The shortest book was A Year Between Friends. And this was a book about friends that live 3,191 miles apart. It's got crafts, recipes, letters that they write to each other, and stories that they tell. It's just a beautiful book about friendship. And the longest book I read was Nosferatu, which is 692 pages long. A book that shocked, shocked you the most. Okay, I don't know where I put the copy of this. I might have given it to someone. I think I did. I think I gave it to my mom to read or something. Uh, but it was A Stranger in the House. <laughs> this book, I found the characters very unlikable, but there was a lot of twists and turns, and then the end just really shocked me. So, if you want to be surprised, read the book. I'm not saying that it's a five out of five stars. It was probably a three. It was like, good it wasn't great but it wasn't not good you know what i mean like kind of in the middle <laughs> favorite non-romantic relationship okay my favorite non-romantic relationship was in the star-crossed sisters of tuscany the it's about two cousins who go to italy with their aunt and try to kill a family curse that has stopped the second born daughter of each branch of the family tree from finding true love. And this Aunt Poppy is just <laughs> wonderful. She reminds me of aunts that I have or have had. The one, the aunt I'm thinking of is not alive anymore, so it's hard to, to say that I have. But anyway, um, I loved the relationship between Aunt Poppy and the two girls. She's just so full of knowledge and she had such a great outlook on life. One of those young people in an old body. I love those people. A book that put a smile on your face. I'm going to have to put these back after I'm done filming because it's too tight of a squeeze. Pumpkin Heads. This book was everything I love about the fall and Halloween and it definitely put a smile on my face. A book that made you cry. Nosferatu, a book that crushed your soul. <laughs> this is actually Brad's book. These are Brad's books over here, and these are my books. We just organize them differently, but, um, but sometimes we read each other's books. So his books go just as far that way, but they go back two layers as these books behind me. But he just has one shelf with them on there. Anyway, 1984 crushed my soul. <laughs> <laughs> and if you've read it, you know exactly why. And if you haven't, read it and find out. I don't want to spoil it for anyone. 
a book that made you the most mad. You know what book really pissed me off? <laughs> it was it was The Whisper Man. Um, it was good, but I found the child abuse and the kidnapping really disturbing, and it, it upset me. And I don't even have children, and it upset me. It doesn't mean I don't love kids. It doesn't mean I don't have kids in my life that I love. You know, I've got nieces and nephews and everything, so it really upset me. <laughs> it was a good book, but I don't think I'll ever read it again. Uh, but because I like Alex North, I'm probably going to keep all of the books of his that I read. Book you didn't get to in 2020, but will definitely get to in 2021. Okay, I cannot believe that I didn't read this book. I bought it, I think it was January or February. I mean, I got it a while ago, and I want to read it. It's just so big that I find it kind of scary. <laughs> But I'm going to read it. Just you wait. Maybe soon. <laughs> most anticipated book of 2021. Non-debut. Uh, the most anticipated book of 2021 that I'm going to read that um, is not a debut, meaning it came out before 2021. Um, I'm also planning on reading Educated this year by Tara Westover. So I'm excited to read that. And then my most anticipated book of 2021 that is a debut, Survive the Night by Riley Sager. I am really fascinated about that one because I think about stuff like that. Like if you've read what the book's about, from what, if my memory serves me correct, it's about a girl who is going home from college and she... Do you remember if you were alive back then in the 80s and 90s, especially? I mean, they still have them now sometimes, but they'd have those things where people would put postings up with like their phone numbers down at the bottom and they'd cut it up and, and everything. Um, apparently, she takes a phone number for somebody who is also going home, I think for Christmas or the end of the semester or something. And she ends up thinking that he might be this killer that was on campus that they haven't found yet. And it sounds like a really creepy page turning book. And I've thought about stuff like that, like how often we trust people that we don't know and we shouldn't. <sighs> I'm super excited to read it. Um, I did read a book of Riley Sager's this year. It was my first book of his that I've read, which was Home Before Dark. And I thought this was a really good book. All right, I would like to read seven books a month in. 2021. So I'm just going to round it up and say 85 books. What my plan is, is to read two new releases, one classic, one nonfiction, one cozy mystery, because I love them, and two random to be read or reread books each month. So seven books a month, maybe more. I've got plenty of to be read books in my stack already. And I'm a book fanatic, so I always have a long list of more books I want to get on my phone. I have a really hard time not buying books every day. <laughs> it's just, I love books. Be sure to tune in next Sunday. I have a huge book haul. Speaking of being addicted to buying books, you know, a lot of women are addicted to shoes or makeup. For me, it's books and mugs. Coffee mugs. Coffee mugs and books. I cannot get enough. It is what it is. It's who I am. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day. Please let me know what your favorite books of 2020 were. And if there's any books that you're excited about reading in 2021. If there's anything that you think that I should read that you think I might really love... Be sure to let me know down in the comments. I can't guarantee that I will get a chance to read everything people recommend, but I will certainly put them on my TBR list. I love you. Bye.